Hey everybody, Mitch with Smedley Plumbing here, and today we're gonna show you how we install a sump pump in an older home from the 50s and in the 60s. This particular work is actually being done through a program called Joco Inflow, where the local sewer municipality is actually paying for this work. It's kind of cool. They see an issue where they have groundwater getting into the sanitary sewer systems, and so it's, it's worthwhile for them to fund the correction of that, and, and we're gonna show you a little bit more about what that is. This particular home has this square box in the floor called an interior foundation drain pit. And what that is, is there is a floor drain hiding in the bottom of this box, and all of the groundwater from around the home is brought to this area through weeping tiles and dumped into the floor drain. Well, when we have heavy rain events and everything else that, that comes with a basement, uh, all of that groundwater gets directed into the sanitary sewer, and the sanitary sewer is not designed to handle that volume of water. And you may be thinking this one little pit here probably doesn't add too much water, but the problem is when you add 10,000 houses in the area, all with these pits, it adds up really, really fast. We're talking hundreds of thousands of gallons of water very quickly. The goal of today's work is to eliminate and render this useless so we don't have to deal with this anymore and then install a standard sump pump. So this is the sump basin that we're gonna be installing in the concrete. They come out of the factory with no holes in them. We drill holes in them so the water can get inside them. And we have to break up the floor, dig a pit, and recess this guy down into the concrete. First thing we have to do is we wanna render this floor drain useless. We typically have several options for that. If we're putting our sump basin right where this pit currently is, then we break out all this concrete and we cut the floor drain off that's in there. And then we put a cap over that drain line leaving that floor drain. But in this case, because our sump basin is actually gonna be over about six or eight feet from here, all we need to do here is plug the floor drain so it no longer drains. We fill the bowl of the floor drain with a waterproof concrete called hydraulic water stop. And then we fill the rest of this pit with gravel and then cap it with concrete. And then this pit's no longer an issue and we can focus on the sump pump. We've taken our measurement off of our reference point, so now we can drill a hole through the side of the house and that's gonna be where the new sump pump discharges out of. While he's out there piping the rest of the discharge and setting the splash block, I'm gonna go ahead and get started breaking up our concrete. And we're done with the jackhammer. All right, so now what we have to do is we have to dig all this rubble out of there. And then we got to dig down with the shovels down into the dirt and sink a hole large enough for our basin to go down in. One of the things that we do whenever we move the basin off of the location of where the interior foundation drain pit is, we need to make sure that we're still getting the basin on the drain tile network that's underneath the slab. But as long as we're on that perimeter tile network, we're good to move the basin laterally several feet. Our basin that we use comes with no holes in it, and we put the holes in there. And how we like to do it is we like to drill 3 eighths of an inch holes in this basin. The pumps that we install can handle half inch solids without locking the pump up. And so if we drill 3 eighths of an inch holes in our basin, then the only debris that can get into the basin is smaller than 3 eighths of an inch. And so our pump will have no problem pumping that on up and out the house. So we actually end up using the basin like a filter to protect our pump so it lasts a really, really long time. roll it out of there instead of just pulling it straight. So like stand back and start twisting. Yeah, there you go. Let's go back on with those, back on with the dryer. We're not gonna turn Anthony's line on just yet. So 
that pretty much wraps up how we install a sump pump. And just walking back through the whole process, we render that floor drain that's down in that interior foundation pit, we render that useless. We fill that with gravel, cap it with concrete, break open the concrete floor, and, and dig all of that rubble out of there. And then we dig that hole down about 26 inches. We set our basin in there and we surround it all with gravel. That basin's drilled with 3 eighths of an inch holes. And then we pipe our discharge pipe up and out the house. We run the electrical circuit and we are done and, and good to go. So um, that pretty much wraps up this video. However, if you wanna see what we do with all this debris that we walk away from these jobs with, stick around here and you'll get some bonus footage of everything that happens behind the scenes to make one of those installs go as smooth as they do. Come back from the job, we've got buckets that are full of dirt, we've got trash, we've got all kinds of other stuff that we need to worry about. Well, right behind the camera over here, we got a 9,000 pound dump trailer. So all of those buckets of dirt get dumped into this trailer. When this trailer gets full, we take it to the city dump and we dump it. We've also got some other trash and stuff that'll go in some receptacles here at our shop but it's really not all that much rocket science. We put it in this trailer and then we haul it out wherever we need to haul it. Back here in the back corners of the shop, we've got a gravel pile. This is where we fill all of our gravel buckets with. So uh, we have all of those buckets of gravel to put around the basin and everything else. And then we've got a pallet of concrete back in this corner back here for any, you know, all the concrete work that we do and all that stuff. So. We pretty much use this shop exclusively for our floor break jobs where we're gonna need gravel and concrete and a place to dump spoils. So this is, it's not overly complicated, but this is pretty much our setup. That's it. She's all loaded and ready for the next one. The transit's actually all electric. And if you're new to our channel, we have a whole series of videos on this guy and how well it's worked for us in the company. So I'm not gonna bore you with all the stuff now, but if you want, check out our other videos.